Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to the video. Welcome to my garage. In this video, I'm going to be comparing the J35 V6 to the 2.4 liter Ecotec. So I think the way I'm going to do this is first I'm going to show you the specifics of this engine, the Chevy 2.4 liter Ecotec. Then I'll show you some specifics of this engine, the Honda J35. Then I'm going to compare the two engines side by side just so you can see some differences between the Ecotec and the J35. And then, although I don't have an air-cooled Volkswagen engine here, I do have the specifications or the dimensions of an air-cooled engine. I will show you size-wise how an air-cooled engine would compare to these two engines because a lot of you guys are gonna be thinking about possibly putting one of these two engines in your air-cooled Volkswagen and I want to show you the differences and some things that you have to look out for if you're gonna do that. So this is my Ecotec 2.4 liter. This came out of a 2007 Chevy Cobalt. This is the LE5 block and as far as the specifics of the engine itself, that's really about all I know. I did get this engine from the junkyard. I paid at my junkyard. If you pull the engine yourself, you can get the engine and the computer for $225. That's what I did with this engine. It came out of a car that was wrecked and it had 113,000 miles on it. Now I did grab it with the computer, so when I got this engine all set up in the car. I did have to modify and make my own wiring harness, but I set the computer away and had it reflashed for standalone operation. That cost me, I think, $350. So with that $350 and the $225, that's the investment I had to get this engine and have it operational, which is not too bad because it's, it's really a really good engine. And this is, like I said, the 2.4 Ecotec and because it has these two solenoids here, this has the VVT or the variable valve timing. A lot of the Ecotecs out there, most of the ones that I see in the junkyard look just like this, but they're the 2.2. I don't know if any of them are 2.4 without the, VV, the VVT, but if you're in the junkyard looking for one of these, a lot of the valve covers look just like this, but they won't have these two solenoids right here. If they don't have the two solenoids, they don't have the VVT. If you can get the VVT, I would recommend it because it does give you a little bit more useful low-end torque. But I don't know, the 2.2s seem to be really, really popular. I don't know if those blocks are supposedly more robust or not, but this engine so far has been really, really good for me. In its state right here, which is pretty much complete. It's got the alternator. This is this is exactly how it was when I pulled it running out of my Baja. The throttle body has been removed, but it does have the flywheel and the clutch. Everything's on there. As it is right here, this weighs 297 pounds. This is a water-cooled engine, so if you're comparing this to an air-cooled Volkswagen, I would say probably add about 75 pounds for your radiator the computer, the wiring harness, and a little bit of extra steel that you're gonna to have to put in your chassis to help facilitate this. So I would say if you took the 297 plus 75, that's probably a pretty good weight setting for how much this setup's gonna weigh. Now this is my Honda J35. So it is a 3.5 liter Honda v V6. And this came out of an Acura a 2004 Acura MDX. I got this from the same junkyard that I got the Ecotec. I did not get the computer or the wiring harness for this engine, so at the local junkyard by me, if you get it that way, the engine is $175. And I did a Carfax report on this car. It was a wrecked car at the junkyard. This engine had, I think, 183,000 miles. So it's pretty high, pretty high up there, but once I got it up and running, boy, I tell you what, it runs, it runs really good. These, these modern engines, and when I say modern, I, I mean anything 2000 and newer, they are really, they can really make good engines these days. Not just Honda, the Ecotec is the same way. I just think modern engines are just, 
just really good pieces of equipment. But anyways, this is the J35, and it is the, if I find the label over here, it's the J35A3. When I went to the junkyard, I was not specifically looking for the A3. I was specifically looking for the A35. I wanted the 3.5 liter. These also come in the 3 liter, the 3.2. Newer ones are 3.7s, but they don't have any 3.7s in the junkyard by me. There's a lot of the J32s and there's a lot of the J35s. I was focusing on the J35 just because I wanted as much displacement as I could get. There's different variations that are supposed to be better, different head designs. I really wasn't too concerned about that. I just wanted a nice, clean engine that looked like uh, I'd have some good luck with it. And so far, this one has worked out really well. Now, just like the Ecotech, the engine that you see here with the flywheel, the clutch, the alternator's not on it right here, but when I weighed it, I put the alternator up there. This engine came up at 329 pounds, so it's about 30 pounds more than the Ecotech. You can, I believe, actually get the computer and the wiring harness with these engines, and then I think there's only a couple of changes you need to make to the wiring harness, and then they'll run standalone. So if you did that, these engines would be a really good economical choice. I didn't go that route. I got this engine, and then I bought an Infinity ECU standalone fuel injection system because I wanted full control over everything. That's a bit more money, but like I said, now I have control over everything. And on this engine in particular, what I did is I just put, these are AN10 fittings here on the back of the cylinder heads. These go back to my radiator. This is an AN16 fitting, and this piece that I made here snakes up and feeds into the factory water pump. But let me push these two right next to each other. We'll go over some dimensions and I'll share some dimensions with the air-cooled engine as well. All right, so I've got the two engines sitting here and they should be, if we look on here, yeah, they're at the same elevation because they're both sitting on the same carts and they're both sitting on two by fours. And you can tell from the center line of the flex plates there they're pretty much at the same elevation and then I've got the both of these have adapter plates on them and they're in line so we should get a really good representation of size here and if we look you can see right here the Ecotech looks a little bit taller but what's missing on this J35 right now the intake manifold sits up here and would probably come to about here Mine's a little bit higher, but a factory one would come to here. So a J35 is a little bit taller than an Ecotech. If we go to the front, you can see that an Ecotech is about an inch and a half, maybe two inches longer than the J35, which really makes sense because since the J35 is a V6, it's really only three and a half cylinders long. The Ecotech is a four cylinder, so it's four cylinders long. So that that makes sense. Width-wise, they are about the same. The J35 is maybe a little bit narrower on the bottom. Not much. And then, of course, the J35 gets a little bit wider at the top because it's a V6. The Ecotech, the Ecotech just kind of stays the same width all the way up. And then, like I said earlier, the weight is about the same. There's about 30 pounds difference between the two. But let me uh, go over some differences between these two engines and an air-cooled Volkswagen. So I didn't have a, an actual air-cooled Volkswagen I could use in this comparison, but I called a friend of mine, Easy Jeezy, who also has a YouTube channel, and he had an air-cooled Volkswagen sitting on his bench. So he pulled a couple of dimensions for me. I wanna share that with you guys right now. So the first thing we're gonna go over is the distance from where the engines bolt up to the transaxle to the farthest part of the engine. So on the Ecotech here, it is, mm, let's say 22 inches. 
and an air-cooled Volkswagen is 14. So an air-cooled, this is the biggest difference, is in the length. So you can see an air-cooled engine would be about eight inches shorter. So if you dropped your air-cooled and you put on an Ecotec, the Ecotec would hang back about eight inches further back and be significantly heavier. And if we go to the J35, he is about 20 inches, give or take. So if you pulled off your air-cooled engine and dropped in a J35, you would be six inches longer and even heavier. Now the width of an air-cooled engine is 31 inches and that's from valve cover to valve cover. So if it's 31, let's just try to split this in the middle and let's go 15 and a half. So you can see obviously an air-cooled Volkswagen, which is a boxer, is a lot wider than a vertical inline four. Same thing if we go here 15 and a half, your air cooled is significantly wider than the J35. But again, the air cooled motor has all that weight really, really low. Both of these water cooled engines, although narrower, you've got a lot more weight up top. And then an air cooled engine from the oil pan to the very, very top. And I think that's all the way to the top of the, the air box or the tin is 25 inches. So if we go to this two by four and we go to 25, you'll see that height wise, the Ecotec and the air cooled are pretty similar. Although your air cooled engine is gonna be 25 inches right where that the tin is. And then you'll have your generator, but this, the Ecotec maintains that height all the way back. And then if we go over to the J35 and go our 25 inches, it looks like the J35 is a little bit lower, but remember, mine doesn't have, this engine sitting here doesn't have the intake manifold. So this will be a little bit taller than your air-cooled. And again, just like the Ecotec, it maintains that all the way across. So that's my comparison between the two engines. I just wanted to, while I had both engines on the floor here, I wanted to do as much of a comparison as I could without getting too deep into the engines. I do think, do some research. If the J35 or any J-series engine can be run standalone just by tweaking the wiring harness, this could be financially a really inexpensive way to go because with this one, with the GM computers, they do need to be reprogrammed and have the security system disabled. Otherwise, they will not run standalone. So you need to keep that under consideration. So that's it for the video, guys. I hope it's helping you with any conversions you're doing or possibly just temporarily entertaining you. And I hope to see you on the next video. Take care. Good job, buddy. Okay, let go.